Six are dead and many more are dying as the result of the battle between officers from Middleborough and Mountaineers. The battle, which was one of the most desperate and revolting of its kind in the history of mountain warfare, occurred between four and six o'clock this afternoon at Lee Turner's Quarter House Saloon, three and a half miles from Middlesbrough. Last month, Turner had some mules and other goods levied on in payment for a debt, and a few nights ago, it is alleged, he with others went to Virginia where the property had been taken, secured what was formerly his, and returned to the Quarter House. Today, Deputy Sheriff William Thompson summoned a posse of 10 or 15 men for the purpose of arresting Turner at his Quarter House Saloon. The Louisville and Nashville refused to convey the officers to the saloon, and they footed it through the mountains. Turner had heard that an attempt would be made to arrest him, and he and his men, 15 in number, gave the officers a warm reception. The saloon is well suited for an attack like this. It is built of huge logs and is surrounded by a 30-foot fence in which loopholes are cut so that the inmates can shoot at outsiders. Turner's surrender was demanded. His reply was a round of shots. Charlie Cecil of Middlesbrough was riding a palfrey in plain view of the Turner gang. Someone who was believed to have been Mike Welch, Turner's bartender, raised a window of the dive and shot Cecil, who fell dead. Instantly, the murderer fell back, pierced by a half-dozen bullets. Then the firing began in earnest. The officers, scattered behind trees and rocks, poured a galling fire into the mountain fortress. In the fight, John Doyle, a former railroad man, was badly wounded, perhaps fatally, and Simon Bean, another ex-railroad man, was shot in the hand. The town men gathered closer around Turner's place, undaunted at the shots which whizzed around them. As soon as Cecil was killed, his companions determined to burn Turner's rendezvous, and in the midst of the battle, a man applied a torch to an exposed side of the building. A few minutes later, the building was in flames. Several of the mountaineers came to the window and were immediately shot down. The posse surrounded the barricade, determined to let none escape. Lee Turner and his friends, however, in some manner escaped and are now at Minge Mines, eight miles from Middlesbrough. Several of his men perished in the flames. This has been the most exciting day ever known in Middlesbrough, notwithstanding the fact that many dreadful battles have been fought within the town limits and in the near vicinity. All sorts of rumors are afloat tonight, one being that five Turnerites were killed by the Winchesters of the attacking men and five more perished in the flames. It is also believed that the posse lost more men than one, and that some of the Middlesbrough fighting may now be lying dead or dying in the hollows surrounding the quarter house. Some of the deputies came in tonight with their Winchesters over their shoulders. They state that half of the men are still at the quarter house and that they will return with reinforcements. It is feared that the trouble is not at an end. Turner, who it is alleged has killed several men, is not one who is easily cowed, and it is believed that he will organize a band and avenge the death of his friends in the burning of his saloon. Turner, the handsome proprietor of the saloon, graduated at Rose Hill, Virginia. He was a brother of Willie Bill Turner, who was killed several years ago. Lee's Quarter House is known far and wide because of the number who have been killed within its confines. Placing the day's number of deaths at only six, 59 have been killed there and twice that number wounded.